So we've talked about um, YouTube in terms of creating um, content and I want to come back to this topic that I had earlier how, uh, how to make money on YouTube. We can actually uh, make money on your YouTube channels. So let's make some notes for that. Um, we have monetiz it's called monetization. So you can make money off of um, YouTube in this variety of ways here. Monetization. Activate ads on your videos. When you watch YouTube and before you can watch it, oftentimes there is an advertisement and a lot of us will click that skip button. Well, some amount of people will click the link to that product and so the original company made money. So let's say I've got my videos. Let's say I've got one of those Comic Con videos that I, that I showed. There, YouTube is going to run an ad in front of it. And if you choose to click on that, I make money. So this is how a lot of this works on, in, in uh, advertising online nowadays. I put ads on stuff. And if you click on these ads, if you click on my, those ads, I make money. So those, those uh, videos that I would upload on my channel or clients or whatever, we would activate monetization, which then it will put ads on the video, and if someone were to click on that video, that company would make money. This is uh, free to activate, but must be activated, and must follow the rules. So we will see when we set it up. It'll give you a big old screen that says, you agree to this if you activate monetization. Basically, you're going to agree that you're not going to click on your own videos. You're not going to click on your own ads on your own videos to trick YouTube into seeing, oh, 50 people clicked on my video. I won. I earned $50, let's say. No, you're not going to click on your own ads. You're not going to abuse the system. Um, so monetization by putting ads on your own videos is a way to make money and it has worked so personally I can tell you I've made a few hundred dollars off of YouTube uh, setting this up I remember uh, when I got my very first payment of 63 cents that I made money off of YouTube now it it took a certain amount of time for that to happen some people right away they can start profiting off of YouTube some it takes a while for me personally, on my own YouTube channels, my own you know non-professional fun stuff, it took about uh, like 18 months to reach my first threshold. And what this is is at the minimum, minimum you must earn a hundred dollars to get a paycheck. So it took me about 18 months. For my YouTube channel to accumulate a hundred dollars and then I got a hundred dollars deposited in my ch in my checking account with no transaction fees or anything it was a hundred dollars so you have to make at least a hundred dollars before YouTube p cashes you out and it took 18 months for me after that the next one hundred dollars that I made took like nine months then after that the next one hundred I made took like six months and I just got another payment two weeks ago of another hundred dollars and that one took like three months so the longer you use YouTube and the more you create videos and the more you build upon itself the faster you'll get paid and there are some people on YouTube that do make thousands of dollars a month and some even are up in the hundreds of thousands and then there's a very small echelon of YouTube stars that make a million bucks off of YouTube making funny weird interesting videos but yeah, then they're spending on good cameras and good microphones and actors, and there's like a TV channel in real life. But YouTube compensates them. Yes? How does um, YouTube know that if I did a video that it wasn't me clicking? Like, how do you know that it wasn't It knows because uh, an obvious way and a not obvious way. If you are logged into your YouTube account and you're clicking on your own videos, it will obviously know you clicked on your own videos because right. you're logged if in. I didn't, if I didn't say that, I wouldn't know. 
say I'm at your computer mm. and I don't log in as me. That, that's one way to get around it because the, there's the two ways that if you're logged into your own account and you click, they'll obviously know. Right. But even if you're logged out and you're at your own computer, it can still register your IP address. Right. So if you're at, it'll know your your computer because everyone's computer has its own IP address, its own address on the internet. So it'll know that way. But yes, you can come to my house and click ten times, and then okay, it, it was ten clicks. Right. But then it might start to say, okay, why were there ten clicks in five minutes? Based well, on your IP address. Yeah. Right. So it, it can track all of that. So really, uh, you don't want to try to mess with it at any way at all because all of these companies are guilty until proven innocent. Shoot first, ask questions later. They will have no problem shutting you down. And if you're at $99 and you need one more dollar and they see some shenanigans, they can shut it down and that money goes away. And there's no way to get it back, really. These companies are so big and have so many people working with them that us little people, there's no way that you're gonna get that money back. So we just wanna be safe the whole time. Second question. Uh yeah, two different examples on advertising, like a, two that I watch. You know, one that will always start off with an advertisement. Yeah. And then the other one, who's actually much more successful, you never see an advertisement on his, uh, his videos. He does it daily. I don't know if he edits them out or where do those advertisements show up? Well, there's the way to make money by putting ads on your videos, or there's these other ways. So they may not have chosen to go this route they may have down here affiliate links so this is for example in the description of the video have links to affiliates so for affiliate products so in that case perhaps let's say they're a technology review company they have no ads to clutter things up but down in the description it says if you're gonna buy this product follow our link and I get a kickback from it so I don't know the exact result or the exact way that particular one is operating, but this is another possible way. Instead of having those annoying ads uh, in the video, in the description, follow my link and I can profit from it. So you would have to, you would just look at the description below that video. Yes. So that's if you're watching it on your PC at home versus you're just watching it on, on the TV and just go to the YouTube channel. It has a recommending click on that, you know, there's no description to get you. Yeah, because nowadays we can watch YouTube on a phone, on the PC, on the TV. You know, there's a lot of smart TVs out there that you can watch YouTube. Those descriptions and links are still there, but on a TV, they just are not really that usable anymore. So, so you can't subscribe to them when you're watching them on that. You'd have to be on the PC or the you, phone. you can, but it's not so obvious. Like, my parents have a really cool, sharp... Um, smart TV and you know I watch videos on it sometimes when I visit them and there is a way you kinda have to go out of your way you have to use the remote control which is so clunky compared to a mouse but you use the remote control to navigate to the channel and click subscribe so it's a lot easier on a computer because then there's the subscribe button right there and you click with the mouse but on the TV there is a way to do it it's just that it's not as user-friendly so uh, you can put you can put ads. You can put ads at the beginning of your videos, at the end of your video, at the middle of the video. And guess what? You make more money when you put it in more places. But guess what? You annoy your your visitors. So many ads on my video. So there are going to be plenty of people that they see an ad and they can't wait to click skip. You saw me that I was skipping it just to show you the good part. So yeah, there's going to be lots of people. Probably the majority of people that are skipping the ads. But there might be. Uh, instances where the ad is relevant enough to the person that they do click and that's when I profit I can check my stats on my channels where there's a steady amount of profit day by day day by day okay he's two dollars today three dollars today one dollar today and then there's a spike five dollars today well someone clicked on an ad that was relevant to them at that point and I profited more so um, there's that way there's the affiliates we'll see when we create the account and we upload a video there's a spot to upload to add text and links and everything that one takes more effort because you have to have some sort of partnership some sort of deal with some company that will pay you to to profit and one of the famous ones is Amazon you can go to Amazon and go to their affiliate program and they will give you special links 
let's say I am reviewing a certain laptop so I'm talking about it in my video this is a great laptop I really recommend it don't forget to click the link in the description well I went over to Amazon first and I set up my affiliate account and they give me a link a special link to that laptop so that link I'm gonna promote it everywhere on my Twitter on my YouTube on my Facebook and I'm gonna try to get people to click that link and if people click the link and buy the product I get some sort of commission out of it that's a lot more effort and it could give you good results because you have to go create this commission this affiliate account elsewhere whereas this monetization built into YouTube is so easy you just turn it on and let it do its thing and I myself have tried all of these aspects and for myself personally anecdotally the simple monetization has worked the best these other ones were a little bit more trouble than they were worth Amazon I've set up Amazon links there and affiliates and they kind of work but Amazon's bar is so high against fraud that they thought I was committing some fraud and they shut me down like three times and you know me I'm not gonna commit fraud <laughs> so I was following the rules I thought and then a couple and then they shut it down and I created it twice three times and I said forget it so I haven't done it again but some people do make a lot of money off of their Amazon affiliates it's just me I think it's too much trouble guilty until proven innocent and I talked to the customer support and they're really like guilty until proven innocent even though I'm talking to a real person and I'm giving them the proof and everything they're like well you're always free to create another account yeah another account where someone else will shut me down and I have to plead my case again where they're gonna say create another account so forget it the monetization built into YouTube is a lot more doable yes the more views that I get again the 1% doctrine I, I get a thousand views and some of those views are gonna be the most serious so the more views that I get toward more clicks so yes it is about the clicks I, I might have 10,000 people looking at the ad but YouTube is gonna pay me for people clicking on the ad so I want to get more subscribers and more views because some of them will be enough that they will click. Advertising. This is like classic ads. You set up a deal with a third party. some sort of revenue sharing let me rearrange these because I would say this is the third one the hardest one the most effort the one to make money the easiest way is monetization we'll look at it in a moment next is to go through affiliates like Amazon affiliates and there's other ones there's like um, one of my hobbies is also uh, magic magic the gathering that card game there are some companies that if you create an affiliate and account with them if you are promoting that magic company you will profit if they click your link then the next level is like in the real world once I'm getting 10,000 views on my videos I could talk to local San Diego companies and say hey I've got a big presence on YouTube would you like me to put an ad in my video and then you have to figure out the the revenue sharing and the contracts and all of that and you create a video then that you mention their local company in your video and somehow you still have to set it up that they go click the link for that local company maybe you know I set up a, you know um, uh, Aztec appliance you know they're a local San Diego company maybe I, I, I tell Aztec appliance I'm gonna I'm gonna mention and I'm gonna feature your stuff in my video uh, would you like to have a contract so then I have to then do the work of making my videos to get views plus then the videos to get them clicks and the and the traffic and that's the most complicated so quick question for, for example the top 10 restaurants or pizza places he was very informal and not non-casual right that he wasn't really advertising the places he was just bringing value and saying this is my top 10 list Mm -hmm. So is he getting any kickback from any of those restaurants? 
most likely yes most likely and it's not bad especially if you're if you're upfront and transparent about it but it's not bad to partner with these companies I'm gonna make a top 10 taco shops and I go to these companies and I say hey you want to be number two that'll cost you 20 bucks you want to be number one that'll cost you 100 bucks that's fine if you're more transparent in the description if you say you know this is a paid advertisement this is a paid placement whatever if you're if you're truthful about it and that's still also optional you don't have to disclose any of that but you know nowadays it's very important for a lot of people to feel things are authentic you know so much fake news running rampant and such that it might be better for us to be upfront and say this was a paid advertisement or this was an affiliate deal or something but that is one way where you can be profiting you could be having deals with these companies for these reviews and they could be over the top saying this place is amazing come here and your family will have a great experience or you could simply talk about it and be real about it but they did pay you some amount to be on the top 10 maybe you're not selling the slots maybe you did put someone at number 10 and they thought they were number two but they did pay to be in the video so it's all fair game and it's just better to be authentic and upfront and transparent yes and also I mean Excuse me, a large following is like the larger company just start contacting you. Yeah, that happens as well. These companies, they're trying to reach an audience. They're trying to piggyback on fame. And if I have a YouTube channel that I've got 10,000 subscribers, that might be uh, useful for them. So they contact me and then we make some sort of partnership. Uh, but most likely if they're contacting you they know what they're doing so you really have to read the contract and maybe have a lawyer look it over make sure that you're profiting enough or more than them trying to profit over you so uh, YouTube is really the only game in town where you can make money off of your you know, off of your content everywhere else you're paying Facebook to promote you're paying Twitter you're paying these companies here on YouTube you can make money like like I said I've made a few hundred dollars in total I think it's 500 it, it took you know two and a half years or something and five hundred dollars in two years is like you know nothing but that's five hundred dollars for making videos and some of these other clients also little by little they make their money and you never know you might have a great idea great videos you, you might go viral and then you profit and this is something that's happening behind the scenes passive income while you sleep you make these videos you upload them and they're running all day long 24 hours on YouTube and little by little you might be accumulating a few cents and then you've accumulated enough for a latte or something <laughs> free latte free latte from your videos So what we're going to do then now, uh, final questions, and then we're going to set it up. Any questions on what we've talked about so far? We're going to set up the account together right now. I'll mention these settings and what to do for monetization, and then we'll upload the video and talk about optimizing for views, trying to get views and subscribers. Let's go to open up your web browser, and let's go to YouTube.com. So we see so many ads online everywhere and from the consumer point of view we hate the ads but from the business point of view we love the ads because that's how we make money here's Papa John's paying whatever millions of dollars to put their 10 second commercial on the home page of YouTube you may have seen a different ad it changes depending on different things but I saw because I was looking at pizza stuff it says this person might be interested in pizza let's show them a pizza ad the more a person uses YouTube and watches certain videos, more of those kinds of videos will appear. So if people are interested in pizza videos and I make a pizza video, my pizza video may appear. If a person is looking up videos about music and I make my own music videos, my video might appear for people. That's one way to try to get views. Create videos of things that are popular. Jump on the bandwagon. When you look at the YouTube homepage, well, here's what's trending. Taylor Swift, Anna Ferris, Saturday Night Live, etc. Food videos, so sports videos, you know, putting out uh, videos of the, of the Little League team or whatever. And that could help get me 
um, more views. And animals are super popular, such as this lion cub trying to roar is the cutest thing you will ever see, and it's got 5.8 million views. So if you happen to record a really funny or cute kind of video that, that ties into your particular business, that might start the viral virality. Okay, so on the top right corner, um, on the top right corner, click sign in, then it'll ask, sign in with a YouTube account. Well, your YouTube account is tied to your Gmail account. And if you were here, when we created our Google Plus accounts, you have an account. If you don't have a Gmail account, you have to take a moment over here under More Options to create an account. This is going to be the same question that came up before. Do I use my personal Gmail or my business Gmail? The answer is yes, either or. It doesn't quite matter. If you use a personal Gmail account, you can use it to then create as many business YouTube accounts as you want. If you've got a business Gmail, then you just create it and you use the business YouTube account. You can use one account to log in to create as many YouTube accounts as you want. So I'm going to sign in with an account that I have of Gmail. we sign in will go on but this is the part that always happens in that when I teach this stuff um, some things look different for different people just because of the um, just because of the way the account is already set up so if it looks very different from what I've what I'm showing here let me know uh, because this account of mine I've already set it up so it might be a little bit different than what you're seeing we take a moment to sign in or sign up. YouTube basically they, we have two ways to use it. YouTube has two uses. Consumer and creator. Consumer is anyone who visits YouTube to watch videos, to consume videos. That's the default. You don't need an account anyone can go to YouTube and start to and press play and watch but a lot of people have a YouTube account because they have a Gmail account and therefore it can it can track statistics better um, so I'm logged in you know I've, I've got an Android device everyone that's got an Android device it's required for them to have a Gmail account so okay everyone's got a Gmail account on an Android device and then I'm watching YouTube well I'm logged in to my Gmail account I'm giving statistics to YouTube to to Google that I'm logged in so it tracks statistics maybe I'm not logged in but YouTube can still track some statistics so a consumer is anyone who visits YouTube either logged in or logged out to watch videos they consume the videos for us then we've got creator anyone who creates YouTube videos. Then anyone can become a creator easily and for free. The benefits of becoming a creator then are monetization. You can make money off of your videos. And then also you can promote or boost your videos. YouTube also has the same feature that the other networks have of boosting my videos. I want to pay to have my video viewed by more people. 
So, because YouTube has so many users, such a big uh, user base, I might find it beneficial to pay YouTube some amount of money to promote my 30 second commercials to try to get me more calls to my business. Same way that I would use Facebook or Twitter, pay a little bit more uh, to reach more of an audience, in this case promoting my videos. So anyone who creates YouTube videos you know, uses uh, boosting, paying for more views. Would you suggest just going organic first and then seeing how that plays Definitely. Out? Definitely. Start off first doing it all for free. See how that's working. And then if you've got the budget, which can be a very, very low budget, $10, $5, then see how valuable it is for you to then go to the next level and pay. But on a spoiler alert, it is often very useful to, to pay. It is on any of these networks and in the real world. You have to spend money to make money. So if you have some sort of budget to market on any of these networks and in the real world, you should do it. You might be able to have a self-feedback loop. You may be making money off of your videos enough to spend that money to then boost your videos to get more views, to get more money. A loop. Okay, so after you sign in, in my case, because I've already set it up, in my case, I've got a logo already set up, which is tied to my, my business up on the top right. So there's, I've got a logo. You may not. It might just be a generic person. And in my case, when I click on my logo at the top right, I have here switch account. You probably don't have switch account because you don't have other accounts to work with. So how many of you, when you click on the top right, do you see switch account? Uh, a few people, OK. And other people probably see my channel and Creator Studio. So the, um, the way we use YouTube up here is that you've got the ability to go to your Creator Studio. So click on. Creator Studio. So at the top right corner, I click Creator Studio. It takes me here. You must create a channel to upload videos. So this is a this is a process here, creating a channel. It'll ask you for a few questions. What's the name of your channel? Let me check something here. Um, Again, this is a little different for everyone. If you've already got a YouTube channel, we can use it as is, or we can create a new one. I'm going to create a new one for testing purposes, but I'll do it in a slightly different way than here. This is going to create a YouTube channel linked to this email address, but I want a different channel. So up on the logo here, there should be a little gear, YouTube settings. Let's click on that one. And then from this settings screen, we have see all my channels or create a new channel. It's kind of hidden in there, so let me show that again. You know, from the YouTube homepage, I can click on my icon and go to Creator Studio. When I'm in the Creator Studio here, then I'll click again on the icon and this time to the gear, YouTube settings. And then from here, I have additional features, see all my channels, or create a new channel. So let's all go to this screen. And you might then see use a business or other name. So this initial setup is a little bit annoying. Once you've got it set up, then it's a little more straightforward. I'm going to select down here, use a business or other name. This one is going to, again, this is going to try to create a YouTube channel linked to this email address. 
which might be my personal address. I want to create a channel for the business or one based on a different name. In my case, it's asking for a brand account or it may ask you to select one that already exists. Information on a text message. we get some kind of uh, screen I've got a brand new account where I would need to customize it like we've talked about other days you want to customize your channel with your logo about information and all of that you can do that on your own and then we'll just return to the creator studio so let me pause there this if anyone's having any trouble the screen looks different you want to create the account and then get to Creator Studio. Anyone need some help there? <clears throat> so in the Creator Studio, this is the creator portion of YouTube. You can switch back to consumer version by just clicking on the logo. <coughs> That'll take you to the YouTube homepage where you can watch videos like a regular consumer. And here's where you can go and get inspiration um, on possible videos and such. And then I can click back on Creator Studio to go back to Creator Studio. We have a bunch of uh, screens over here with a variety of settings and, and features. And let me jump to the one that people have been very uh, eager for. Uh, last week when we made our video, uh, we put sound in a video. And I provided you with a sound. The question comes up about, uh, can I use my favorite song? And short answer, no. Long answer, no because it's a copyrighted song. You don't want to use uh, copyrighted material. So YouTube gives us a whole library of free music, and it's right here. If you look under Create, click Create there, and that takes you to the YouTube audio library. A lot of free music or sound effects. And you don't have volume on your computers. You can't hear these, but let's say I play one, Black Polka Dots. <laughs> Too loud, so let me fix that here. This is in the this is two minutes long in the style of rock angry. Okay, we have two step. Two minutes fifty seconds. This is in the style of dance and electronic and bright. Well here you have screens upon screens upon screens of music that you can just keep scrolling. Better yet, we have filters. Give me music in a genre, mood, instrument, duration, or attribution. So I want to hear in the mood, give me music that is calm. My video needs calm music. So it's going to filter itself. So here's one, the rain. Green Forest. And I can fur further filter for, OK, my video lasts five minutes. I'm going to go to the duration of five minutes. I want instrumentation of, uh, let's 
see what instruments we have there. Drums, I want calm music that focuses on drums. So we have some of these. And then we've got a download button. We would download the song and then use it in Movie Maker or iMovie or Premiere or whatever. So this is the big secret. This is where you're going to get music. No, you're not going to find real music from the Beatles or Shakira or the Ramones or whatever. You're not going to find real music here, Michael Jackson, whatever. But you can't because that music from real artists costs thousands if not millions of dollars to license. You hear this music on, on movies and TV shows because they paid thousands or hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars to, to have the right to copy that music. That's a copyright. They have the right to use that music. You're not going to get music from real musicians, but you're going to get music in that style of that duration and better yet, best of all, for free so that you don't get in trouble with the lawyers. That's the most important thing. Then people ask, well, I heard you can use, you know, 10 seconds of a song. Don't even try to, like, go under the radar about, like, all of that. Well, what's the maximum amount of length that I can use and all of that? Again, shoot first, ask questions later. Guilty until proven innocent. You're going to get shut down. You're going to get a message from YouTube, or they will simply shut down the video or your whole account if you violate the copyrights, especially too many times. They're going to say, this is a serial... Uh, you know, rule breaker, and they'll just shut you down. They don't care. They've got a billion other accounts to deal with. So you should then use these songs that are okay for you to use. Yes? If you decide that you want to you know, break your video, put it out there, um, and you say, find another song on here, and say, I want to change the soundtrack, can you do it or are you stuck? You no, you are stuck. When you upload a video to YouTube, it's basically set in stone the video itself. You can change the the title of it or the description and stuff, but the video itself, you would have to delete the video and re-upload the new version with the new music. So what that does though is it deletes all of your views. If I already had a hundred views and I decide to choose a different song, I'm gonna have to delete that version with the wrong music and lose those hundred views and upload the new version and start again with zero views. So really, we want to have a video that is complete. We want to spend some time finding the right song, add it to our video, and upload it because we don't want to lose. It's sort of like losing our place in line. We've already uploaded that video a week ago. It's gotten some views, some activity, some traffic. I don't want to delete it and start over. One more little wrinkle here. Do you notice that some of these songs have a little person? looks like the, the sign to the bathroom. Well, that is the attribution icon. Over here, Scissor Vision says, you're free to use this song in any of your videos. And this one, Kumasi Groove, you're free to use this song in any of your videos, but you must include the following in your video description. So this little chunk right here, I have to include that in the description of my video or anywhere else that I use it. It's still free to use, but you have to give attribution. That's what that means. You have to attribute the original creator. They're not asking for money. They're just asking for you to acknowledge that Kevin Mac McLeod uh, made this song. And you have to put this message in your video. If you don't put that message or you reword it, you've broken the rules and again, guilty until proven innocent. I personally don't like that and I forget to do that. I'm busy making the video, uploading it, promoting it, etc. I forget to add this attribution. I recommend then, instead on your filter here, attribution, attribution not required. Don't even show me songs that I have to do the extra step of attribution that does then cut down some amount of the songs and that was a perfect song for my that was the perfect song for my video but whoops I forgot to attribute it I get a letter from me from from YouTube and then now I'm in trouble because they didn't attri attribute it save yourself some hassle by choosing whatever of these other filters but staying on the attribution not required 
therefore you can use these songs and not even care about uh, attributing the original artist. probably find the perfect song for your videos. And then what I like to do personally, this is just completely personal. You see these, um, these little bars right here? This is popularity. It doesn't give you any numbers, but this is the popularity of a song. How many times has it been download and downloaded and used by people? This is also relative. Based on the results, of this filter, calm, drums, attribution not required, these results, dreams, dream yourself smooth, is, is a, one of the least popularly downloaded ones. What that means to you is, if you use this song, less people have used this song. So you have a little bit more of a unique song than the rest. As opposed to everything nice, everything's nice, that one's got relatively a lot more downloads, so your song is on someone else's video. It doesn't tell you a thousand other videos have this song, or seven other videos. It's just a relative measurement. It'd be kind of cool that it would tell you how many other videos used it. But comparatively, this song here has less downloads and use on YouTube than this one. And this one also here has less use. I personally like to first seek out the songs that have less usage. If they're within the filters and less usage and I like it, that's the one that I like to use for my own projects or clients projects but sometimes this one is popular for a reason and I might use it also it doesn't happen that much because again there's millions and millions and millions of videos but I've seen a couple of examples once in a while in all of these years where I had my video with the song that I chose and then I watched someone else's video and it's the same song I'm like oh, they used my song well it wasn't my song to begin with it was YouTube song but that's something to think about and then we've got also at the very top sound effects So you've got all of these uh, types of sound effects that you can also filter. And this is um, this is what I would would say uh, instead of trying to use uh, real music use the YouTube Creator Audio Library. Uh, we don't have time to look at all of these side screens, but let me mention here analytics. This is a very important screen. This, these are your stats. This tells you in any amount of time period that you want, uh, for as long as you've had the account, this will tell you a bunch of great stats. It'll tell you your video was very popular in Canada. Uh, a female viewership uh, is 50%. Um, time of day and a variety of things. So as you create your videos and upload them, this you want to pay attention to everything in this section because this will tell you um, which of your videos were popular and which ones weren't. And even something like this over here. Um, audience retention. People ask, uh, do I, uh, what's, what's the right length of a YouTube video? 
well, any length is the right length because it depends on your topic and your target audience. I had that one of um, how to build an app in five minutes and it got 130,000 views. Uh, I put out the sequel to it uh, where it takes 15 more minutes and that one's also getting thousands of views. So simply because I got a lot of views on the five minute long one doesn't necessarily tell me I, I need to keep all my videos at five minutes. The one at 15 minutes is also doing well because of the topic. People want to know how to make their own app, so I've got two videos for that topic. Uh, I said last week I uploaded a video that was three hours long. And that's got like a hundred views. Someone is not sitting and watching nonstop three hours, but they jump around, they watch a little bit here and there, and this audience retention will tell you for your whole channel and for individual videos, a lot of people were watching on the first two minutes and then less on the next minute and then almost no one made it to the final five minutes. So your audience retention statistic is very useful to guide you of how long should my videos be. These other screens, you can look at them on your own. I would look at, for example, the channel one on your own. This is the, this is the part where you have to go to verify your account that you're a real person. And this is the part where you would set up monetization. Notice right now it says in, ineligible because I need to check, I need to set my country, I need to verify my account, and then I'll have monetization option all of these extra options that regular people don't have until they do a little bit of verification such as live I want to broadcast live well I need to enable it do whatever so all of these right now my videos at the moment are can only be up to 15 minutes if I need a longer video I have to I have to activate it I want a custom address right now technically my YouTube channel is youtube.com slash gibberish I want youtube.com slash Victor's Bakery. I want a custom address. So I have to see what do I need to do to be eligible for that. I'm not eligible for sponsorships. That's another kind of way to make money, getting sponsored. Or I want to add paid content. That's another way to make money. You can charge for people to view your videos. That's different than putting ads. But definitely on your own look at this channel screen and look and read about how to activate these and you want most of them activated especially the ones related to monetization I'm gonna upload a video and then talk about how to optimize it to then try to get views in the network folder remember I asked you to get a copy of the PDF and the video we made last week so I created a testing account to upload this video. Maybe you have only your real account. I don't think you want to upload my video to your account. You could if you want to, and then delete it. But I'm going to upload the video that we made last week to then show you concretely about, OK, how do I get views and subscribers? I have this Upload button on the top right corner. I'm going to click on that. And then we have here the various privacy settings of a video. Public, unlisted, private, schedule. Choices for types of video. Public, unlisted, private, scheduled. Public. Anyone with the link or searching. view your video. So they're on YouTube, they search. 
top 10 pizzerias and my video is top 10 pizzerias in San Diego so they've searched they could find my video every video on YouTube has a link a unique link so if you copy and paste your link and I'll show you where to get that in a moment if you copy and paste your link into an email and you send it to 10 people in an email they can watch your video you can copy and paste that link into your website and they can watch your video so public is the most public people can find it by via searching or with the link unlisted anyone with the link or who you approve can view so if they search for your video even with the exact name they won't find it it's unlisted just like in the phone book I have my phone number in the phone book anyone can see my name in the phone book and call me or I could pay the phone company to, to, to make my phone number unlisted but if they have my phone number they can still call me if they get it somehow they can call me in YouTube if they have the link if you shared the link of your video on an email list and someone got a hold of it that you didn't really want them to see it they can see it we also have a way to approve which is very cumbersome it's not that great you can allow only three certain people to watch the video but you have to write all of their email addresses in a little box that is this is who I'm approving to watch it and it's not really like you can select your whole address book at once it's kind of annoying so unlisted is sort of like making your video hidden to certain people but they need the link and it's hidden from search this one about approval it's more trouble than it's worth in private basically no one can see your video but you this is hiding the video completely even if they've got the link it's private they'll get to a dead-end page this is like when we were talking about testing I might upload a couple different versions of the video and I have one version active while I'm testing it out and then I make it private and I upload another version and you know do some a B testing scheduled scheduled ultimately becomes a public video on a set date so uh, I'm gonna make it a goal I'm gonna try it out I just I'm, I'm very excited about my business my goal is every week I will upload a video maybe I'm gonna talk Victor's Bakery I'm gonna talk about ingredients maybe I'm just gonna set up the camera really simple and talk to the camera and talk about ingredients and I want to get some buzz for myself on YouTube so every Monday morning for the next month I want to upload a video well I need to remember to upload it or schedule it if I make all four of those videos on Saturday night and I upload them all on Sunday but I schedule them that they will appear every Monday for the next four weeks they will become public and appear and be searchable automatically on the day and time that I specify in my case then I'll keep it public and I will click that upload button and then my video Tech Review Tuesday. <coughs> That's the one I'm going to upload. Depending on the speed of your internet connection, mine zoomed by because we have a fast connection on, on campus. But depending on your internet connection, uh, this will take either a long time or a really long time to upload. Because this this our our cable company never really tells us this our cable company is always telling us um, 10 megabit downloads panoramic Wi-Fi and all these buzzwords our cable companies are telling us you're gonna get such amazing speeds if you buy these packages 
Well, they're really only talking about download speeds. I buy my package over at AT&T or Cox or whatever, and they're going to give me 50 megabits download. Yeah, that's fast. Downloads, not uploads. It's very rare for any of these companies to give you a very meaningful upload speed unless you pay a lot. So I might be able to download the latest episode of Game of Thrones really fast. But then when I'm uploading my own video, it takes a while. I have to go get a coffee or, or, or get, go get dinner or something. Uh, I regularly make a lot of videos that are 10 minutes long, whatever, and then it takes like 30 minutes to upload. Because the upload speed of my provider is not as fast as the download speed, and most of us have that. Mine uploaded really fast because it was only one minute long, and the school has a fast internet connection. Eventually the video uploads, and then we have a variety of things we need to set here. Let's say I've got an amazing video, but now I've got to take the time to set up this metadata. So right here we'll talk about tips for getting views. Number one, have a great video. Easier said than done. Great video would be an idea, uh, visuals, whatever. We've already talked about that. Number two, metadata. Title of the video. In this screen that I have up there, there's a bunch of boxes to fill in. One of them is the title of the video, right here. Mine automatically filled into Tech Review Tuesday because that was the name of the file of my video. There's title. My video was called Tech Review Tuesday.mp4. So it automatically filled that in. And yes, I can change that however I want. So you fill in a title. An authentic non-misleading title. What is the video about? What are keywords people may search for? Get ideas from the competition. No need to add your branding here. So, okay, I made that video Tech Review Tuesday, but I made the channel Victor's Bakery. Okay, just ignore that. Assume that I've got Victor's Tech Reviews. Let's assume that's the name of my channel, Victor's Tech Reviews. So my idea is I'm going to upload videos on a regular basis about me reviewing technology. That is a viable way to make money off of YouTube. I'm going to review things, and then I have these ads, and I'm going to make money. Well, I don't need to put the name of my channel in the title of my video. It's already there elsewhere. So this Tech Review Tuesday doesn't really say very much. So the example title here not so good. A better example would be something like review of the Moto G4. That's the actual phone there. That's a little better. I've got the keyword review and I've got the keyword Moto G4, the name of the product. That's better. I've got those keywords. Even better, perhaps. Budget phone review Moto G4. Better. -er. This might be a little bit more better, much better, because okay, it's got the name of the product, it's got the keyword review, and it's also got here another keyword budget phone. People that are looking for a budget version or a budget, uh, budget friendly phone, that's what they're going to look for. That required me to think a little bit more outside the box. 
that required me to maybe check the competition, I'm going to I'm going to myself search for the keyword Moto G4 and see what other YouTube videos are appearing with that name and how can I stand out? No one is mentioning how this can be a good budget phone. So therefore, I'm going to put that keyword for the people that were searching and they don't find a budget review. Mine's got budget in the in the title. The best titles, there's no such thing perhaps because unfortunately also I have all of these great tips and advice and they've worked, but sometimes there's examples of, of a terrible name, but other things helped it go viral. These are the things that we'll continue to look at. Metadata description. So let's say in my case, I'm not putting the name of my channel, Tech Review Tuesday. I'm putting, the, I'm putting what it actually is. It's a budget phone, it's a review, it's the name of the product. So that's what I'm going to choose there. And you have space to really type a lot if you want. At a certain point, I think it does tell you, like right there, your title is too long. That was a really, really long title. So what might be useful is to think about writing a title that goes you know, just about to the edge of that little box. That's probably enough space for you to. Um, he doesn't complain anymore. That length of a title might be enough to get in the keywords that you need, and you could go past that to some degree, and it will tell you if it's too long. Even that, not so bad. And now it's too long. Next, we've got description. Here's a part, really, where there will be no problem about the, the length of the of what you write. Concise on the title, but then on the meta description, as long as you want. Complete sentences. Full of keywords. Can include links. So http colon mysite.com product one.html, whatever review can include links. They will become active, they will be clickable. Time codes. If you've got a long video and you talk about a variety of things, it's going to annoy people for them to fast forward or try to jump around to the right place. You can include time codes. You can also call them perhaps chapter stops. Let's say for the first five minutes I'm talking about a certain topic. Then on the, you know, five minutes in I talk about another topic I can in my description write a list of the different topics based on their chapter or their time code and that will become an active link so for example I've got a five minute long video and I'm saying at 15 seconds first impressions at one minute and 44 seconds, price. At 2 minutes and 22 seconds, downsides. Or let's say upsides. And then at two min at 3 minutes, exactly, downsides. See what I'm doing here. I'm writing minutes, colon, seconds. This will create an active link in the description. A person can click on 222 and it'll fast forward them automatically into 2 minutes and 22 seconds. This is great, like let's say on Twitter or Facebook. I have a 5 minute long video, but on Facebook I want to see, hey everyone, check out, my, check out my downsides of this product. I can get the link, I'll show you in a moment, you can get the link to an exact point in time in your video and guide people. Look at my video exactly right here. 
Yes, I'd like people to watch all five minutes, but nowadays, even a five minute long video, might, people might not stick around and watch all five minutes. It's only five minutes, but I don't have five minutes. I have the rest of my day to do. So if I do these chapter stops using time codes, I can guide people to the right time. Simply write minutes, seconds, to link to that moment. They will become active links after you publish. So this meta description, then I've got the space to write as much as I want. Check out our review, or my review, of this great budget friendly phone. It works on AT&T, Verizon, Cricket, etc. It is perfect for first time smartphone users. So as much as I want here, fill it with real sentences, with the keywords of what people might be searching for. And uh, this video is only a minute long, but you know, I, I could say then the way I like to do it is somehow just have some sort of something visual there that catches people's attention chapters so I can write 0 minutes 10 seconds intro at 0 minutes 22 seconds uh, rating if you go too pa too far you know this is not a 5 minute long video so if I put in some time that's beyond it it doesn't really do anything it's it's the length of your video and remember when you watch when you watch your own video or when you're editing it in the video editor it will tell you the time so right here just simply watching it in in the in the video player before I upload it I can make a note down here okay I mentioned something at 10 seconds I do something else at 22 seconds so that time code right there 022 that's what I would use to put into the description. You have no limit here, really. You can write a lot as much as you want. Then we've got tags. So this is the spot for separate keywords and um, it gives some precedence here over here in the tags box it gives a little bit more weight but it doesn't hurt to have the same keywords in both it's just that in the description it should be real keyword real sentences and in the tags it's keywords so here the way I would write this example some keyword and then comma and then another one and another one so here I could write review comma so then it becomes an active keyword uh, moto g4 comma and then uh, budget phone comma maybe I could write here tech review Tuesday the the keyword that is my channel and there's not not really a limit here either so I could say then metadata tags one or more keywords separated by commas. You can use 
use the same keywords as your description or different. So the reason, uh, the reason videos get views and go viral is because of this. Title, description, tags. People are searching for these concepts and they find what they want. And then the, the, the internal secret algorithm of YouTube then sees, OK, this is getting popular for this reason. Let's make it more popular. As a person watches a certain kind of video, another video related appears and autoplay kicks in and YouTube also um, tells a person uh, YouTube reminds a person hey uh, remember this video why not watch it again so YouTube has this sort of like built-in viewing algorithm that is a trade secret that no one knows how it works exactly but the more you take advantage of it in filling in these fields the more it will help you Here's a spot where I can also set it public or not. And notice I can also set it to scheduled. And then here's where I set the time and all of that. Private, no one can see it. Unlisted, you can approve people and public. You can also automatically share it to Twitter. So I publish it and then a link will be sent over to my Twitter account to guide people back to watch it. And here's where I can create playlists. I really recommend people use playlists. So number five, use playlists. Group your videos into topics. Victor's Bakery, I might upload videos that are um, recipes or um, just discussions on nutrition or maybe interviews with my with the people that work at the bakery group your videos into topics so that that topic can be shown to the right people the right viewers so that more of your videos are auto played. So that you can share a lot of related videos easier. They're like they're grouped together, they're they're bundled together like a pin board or a Google Plus group. You know, it's like a folder. It's a way to organize a variety of videos together. We have this screen of translations. This is not useful to a lot of people, but it might be useful to you. Right now, the language of this video is in English, and all the metadata is in English. Well, uh, I can set the language of this video, and then also set that I, that the uh, that the alternate is in uh, Spanish. This does not automatically translate for me anything that I wrote here into Spanish. I have to provide a Spanish language version of what I've written here. So I have to go in and write this title in Spanish and the description in Spanish. But if I need this or if I do this I might reach an audience that is searching for videos in Spanish 
Now the language of my video also was in English, so this takes a lot more work than simply activating another language. I have to provide the description and such in another language, and I can also provide the soundtrack in another language, which takes a lot of setup. But this could be a way to reach more of an audience. Under advanced settings, this is the part about keeping things on track, on topic. The default is allow all comments. All the good comments and all the bad comments can be added right away. We also have the option instead, no comments. Okay, no one can say anything good or bad about your video. I would recommend instead um, approved. We have also all except potentially inappropriate comments. The, the YouTube algorithm is going to try to see that these are the comments with a bunch of profanity and whatever and then it won't show them. I don't trust it that it's smart enough to do that. I would rather do approved. So what happens here is no comments will be visible until I approve them. I can approve them on the Creator Studio inside of Community. Under Community, Comments, here are all comments that have been published, which I can delete. And here are all comments that are held for review. And here are likely spam. So everyone's comment, good or bad, will show up here until I click check mark approved. Obvious part of that is that I will keep only the, the comments that are not profane or off topic or negative. And if I choose, I can keep only the good comments. Yes, maybe I'm uploading a video and, and three people have a legitimate complaint saying, you know, this place is nice, but you know, this time uh, my food was cold and whatever. If I want to, I can, not, I can disallow that comment. I can remove it. If I want to, I can keep only the positive comments. That's fine. Yes, that is sort of skewing things, and that's fine if you want to uh, make it obvious or not. It's, again, it's your property, your video, your content. You can control the message. You're not violating anyone's rights or anything like that. It's my property. I can guide it how I want. So I recommend it. set it on approved, that way to keep it on track. Uh, other options here that might be useful, uh, users can view ratings. Okay, so this is again, this one's about the, th about the thumbs up or thumbs down. There's really only yes or no. If you leave this one on, people can give you thumbs up or thumbs down. And if you have a really controversial video and you get a lot of thumbs down, well, it looks, you know, it looks annoying that people thumbs down, thumbed down, so you can turn it off. But then you can't get thumbs up. I would leave that one on unless you do have a lot of negativity, then turn it off. All these other options that are default are fine. Uh, but those are the ones that I would say definitely uh, check your comments on approved. If you activate monetization, there will be one more tab here called monetization. And you can choose play an ad before or after or in the middle of my video. And for a one minute long video like mine, it won't put an ad at the beginning and the end in the middle. There's just not enough length. If your videos are at least 10 minutes long, that's when it can add one at the end, at the beginning, and at the middle. More ads that appear, the more possibility of someone clicking the ad for you to profit. More possibility of you annoying your users, right? Because we don't like ads as a consumer, but we love ads as a creator. So I don't have the monetization tab. I will get it after I activated under the settings over here channel I go through the monetization process once I've set all of that up I publish and then I get a link to my video that unique link then I can share it over to Facebook 
Twitter, Google+, Plus, et cetera, et cetera, Pinterest. I can send it via email to people. I can embed it on my website. If I copy that code and I paste it into my website, my video will appear on my website. And you can always get back to this screen by going back to your Creator Studio. You will see a list of all your videos. You can also see them here. When you edit your video, you'll get all of that information. If I misspelled something, if I want to tweak it a little bit, I can go back to edit. The video itself is set. You cannot change anything about the video. But I can go back in and change any of this other stuff whenever I want. Maybe I get a better idea for, for, for different verbiage. Great, I can come back to my video, any video, edit it and change any of this and save it. And that might give me better results when people are searching. And here again is the is the link. So I can change that. I can change the thumbnail. I can pick a different thumbnail within my video. And I can eventually upload my own custom thumbnail. I have to activate it. But I would recommend that you create custom thumbnails because it might not pick the perfect thumbnail for you based randomly out of your video. Maybe my eyes are closed in all of them, so none of those would look good. I would add a custom thumbnail through this process, and I would add a great, a nicer photo. So there's things that you can do for your own video to get views and such, and then one more. Recon. Reconnaissance. The competition. The competition can help you get views in these ways. If you thumbs up, subscribe to other channels, you may get that back as I thumbs up people's videos, as I watch people's videos, as I subscribe, those channels get the notification. Victor's Tech liked your video. Victor's Tech subscribed to you. That's exactly what I said about the other networks. When I like someone's tweet, when I follow someone's Facebook, those people get the notification they then decide to come back to my channel and, and watch or like or subscribe or may not it is it is not reciprocal it is not that i give i gave seven, i subscribe to seven accounts and all seven will follow me back it doesn't happen that way that's one way another if you comment with a link on someone else's video you may get that back I'll do that one right now you do the reconnaissance you do the competitor analysis you check other people what are other people what are other videos in this same niche I'm gonna piggyback on their popularity so to do that. I'm going to get a copy of my own video. I'm going to search YouTube for who else is talking about the Moto G4. Moto G4. I'm just going to search Moto G4 just like that. There's suggestions, but I'll just search like that. There's going to be results. So Nat and Friends appears. Android Police appears. Detroit Borg appears. Let's say for any of these, even if it's an ad. I'm going to click on anyone else's video. OK, nine minutes long. My point is, most accounts then have active down here the spot to add a comment. to pick one that didn't. Okay, let me go back. Uh, Moto G4 review. Let's see down here. 
here it is. Okay, so um, you know after the ad, they're trying to make money. So if I click there, they'll make money. But if I skip, they don't get money. Okay, so they've got their review, three hundred forty-five thousand views, and they've got their comments open. So what I'm going to do here is I can paste my video, and that will be an active link. That makes me look, however, like a spammer. I'm going to say instead, great video. I really think this phone is going to change a lot of things. Super generic. I, this applies to everyone's review, doesn't it? But then that's where I'm going to put my video by saying, check out our take on it. Now I don't quite look like a spammer. If I just dump my link onto someone else's popular video, I look like a spammer. They get the notification that says Victor's, Victor's Techs re uh, made a comment on your video. They can choose to delete my comment. Well, if I'm a little bit more on topic, if I give them something positive, I like your video, etc., a great review, I like your videos, whatever, and then also mention my own, that's a little less spammy and they may then leave my comment alone and now this is a popular video 345,000 views and 428 comments and there's a lot of people talking about it but mine is the one that when I put when I post comment here my mine has an active link right there and that stands out so there's people that read that look at the the video and then check out the the what else is there and someone, you know, if I've got my, if I've got my logo filled in and my real name and whatever, and then they read that and they see an active link, they may say, "Who is this, Victor's Tech?" And they click on it, and it takes them back to my video for more views, where they can then subscribe or thumbs up or comment. So the note here is. find another video on the same topic contribute a sentence or two on topic being positive paste the link to your own video obviously I'm not going to take my tech video and paste it into a realtor's video it has nothing to do with it and if they know what they're doing they're gonna delete my my comment why is someone just inserting their review of technology into my video of real estate how to apply for your first loan it has nothing to do with it you look like a spammer best case scenario they delete your comment worst case scenario they delete it and report you and again, shoot first, ask questions later. You get too many of these demerits, and YouTube will just shut you down. You're a problematic account. You're gone. And uh, you know you were just trying to to get views. You're not a spammer. I I trust you, but you were doing a spam tactic, and YouTube won't trust you. So reconnaissance here. Check the competition. Check keywords of of other accounts see other videos and look I, I get all of these results of everyone talking about the G4 all of these accounts it doesn't hurt me it just takes time to go to all of these and write something positive related to their video and insert my own link some of these accounts maybe Techline HD will delete my comment but a lot of these others won't and then there's gonna be plenty of people that are looking and then say what is their take on it and if I do write it in an interesting or funny way, maybe they will click and look at my review and I got that view, which maybe then that results in a follow, a subscribe, which then maybe results in a sale or a click to my website. Or maybe it results in people clicking on the ad and I make money off of it that way. We have to wind down as the class ends, but that's the idea. These are the these these are ideas to get more more views. You have to have a an, a product. You have to have an idea. We talked in that handout a lot about of ideas, 
and you have to have something to show for it you have to create a video you can't come to YouTube with nothing but a video um, I gave you ideas for videos and then okay ideas of how to get some more views fill in that metadata those keywords people are gonna search and so forth then go off to other people's um, go off to other people's videos and here's a fertile ground for you to insert yourself into their popularity uh, if you're on topic if you're interesting if you contribute something and um, that can help you go viral general questions about what we've talked about so far yes uh, where do you put the uh on your own video when you're editing your own video it's in the description, the description of your video if you're saying about commenting on someone else's video yeah on someone else's video you're going to see a spot that says comments right. and there you can add links as well but be careful about it that way unless you don't seem like a spammer this would be more of a your own YouTube channel and for your that you're going to put the link back to your website. Exactly. So on my own website here, on my own on my own video, I would go to my own video and then say and read more about it on our site. And I put the link back to my site. I put, the video, I put the link back to my own site on the description of my own video, and that will be an active link. How do you delete? When you go back to your video manager, so inside of your creator studio, and you go look at your video manager, you'll see a list of all, of all your videos, and then you have edit, but then next to edit, you have options here, and there's delete. Here they've also got the part about, well, let's say you lost your original copy. You can download the video back here. You can edit these things. These first ones are also found under here. But then there's this separate ones here. And here's promote, which is boosting. Here's where you can pay a few dollars to get more views to your video and more traffic and maybe more sales and so forth. That's a whole setup right there. But that's very similar to what we looked at Facebook and Twitter in that we uh, boost or promote our videos. Final questions? All right, I'm going to put my notes in the network folder. We don't really have time to print at the moment. Uh, and uh, the notes will still be there next time. If you come back next week, it'll be a brand new day with new networks and new topics. The material from these past classes will still be there. Uh, you'll be able to to get them. There it is in the network folder. Today's notes, 2017, 10, 27. What are we doing?